Everyone loves Italian food, so today I'm making some of my favorite dishes. A beautiful, tasty tomato and basil bruschetta with a crispy crostini, an anapasta salad with a vegetarian twist, and our guiltless challenge of the day, eggplant parmesan. My recipe turns this classic Italian recipe into a healthier, lighter version that is so good, you won't be able to tell the difference. And for dessert, a tiramisu trifle, low in fat and no dairy. Viva Italia! Hi, I'm Jen, and welcome to my kitchen. Today's challenge, some lighter and healthier versions of some of my favorite Italian recipes. I'm gonna start with a beautiful tomato and basil bruschetta, make a really pretty, tasty crostini, and then a gorgeous anapasta salad with some really fun vegetarian options. So I'm gonna start with a beautiful loaf of organic bread that I bought at my favorite vegetarian bakery. We're just gonna cut this into some petite crostini slices. Now I'll make sure to put a gluten-free recipe for this online for any of you who can't have wheat. We're gonna put these on a tray. Just a basic cookie sheet. I like really petite slices. It's just enough to go along with the bruschetta and not enough to ruin your appetite. I'm gonna drizzle these with balsamic vinegar, but I'm actually using a honey balsamic because like wines, balsamics can have sulfites, but a honey balsamic vinegar, no sulfites. So in case you're allergic, and I'm just gonna do a quick drizzle. These are gonna look really pretty when they toast. I'm gonna take just a little bit of organic olive oil and do the same thing. Again, you just want to try to be very light and sparing whenever you use oil, because every little bit adds up. Okay, let's put these under the broiler for just a few minutes until they're nice and toasty. Now we're gonna make our bruschetta. I love bruschetta, and it, tomatoes are just so good for you. So I'm gonna start with about four chopped and seeded organic Roma tomatoes. I'm gonna add Oh, about half a cup or so of chopped onion, some minced garlic. And you're gonna wanna mince that garlic really fine because you don't wanna get too big of a bite of garlic in there. I'm gonna use just about a teaspoon or so of grapeseed oil. Again, I'm so sparing with the oil when I cook. I'm gonna chop some gorgeous, fresh, organic basil. And I know it's fresh and organic because it comes from my own herb garden. Sprinkle that in there. Okay, now to that I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt. Again, these flavors are so good that you don't need a lot of seasoning. A little bit of fresh ground pepper. This is gonna be so good. And what a healthy dish for you. The onions, the tomatoes, the garlic, the fresh herbs in there. Okay, we're gonna, just gonna let this sit and let these flavors combine while we make our antipasto salad. Now we're gonna to put together a really beautiful anapasta salad with some really fun vegetarian treats. Now anapasta generally means before pasta, so it's just the salad you have before your pasta course. And I have some really neat things today. First for plating, I'm gonna start with some gorgeous organic lettuce. Lettuce is generally not a big part of the anapasta dish. And now I have some vegetarian salami. Now this is made out of soy, but it has all of the flavors and spices of traditional salami. And I also have some fabulous vegetarian pepperoni. And this is great, it's great on pizza, it's great if you wanna put it in your lasagna dishes, just for a really fun, healthier twist on a traditional classic favorite. So now we have some actual vegetarian or vegan cheese. This is made from almonds and it's actually a form of mozzarella. And again, just a really fun, tasty alternative if you're looking to do a lighter and a pasta dish. There's just so many neat products out there and it's so much fun to experiment with them. Can okay, I have some beautiful roasted red peppers? Put a couple on our plate. Mmm, 
Oh, I love roasted red peppers and I love marinated vegetables. We have some beautiful Italian marinated vegetables here. And they're just done in a vinegar marinade, so there's not a lot of fat or calories to them at all. These are great things to snack on. Now some of them you have to watch the salt content, but if it's basically a vinegar marinade, there's not a lot of salt used. And of course, the classic Italian pepperoncini. Let's check out our crostini. These look perfect. See how the balsamic is caramelized when we toasted the crostini? It's gonna taste so good, and it's such a pretty simple presentation. Mm. And we're gonna plate our bruschetta. Oh, this is so good, and so good for you. And we use just a tiny, tiny touch of oil. You'll notice a lot of recipes call for a lot more oil, just not necessary. Put a couple of our crostini on there. These look just fabulous. And for a little fun decoration. Gonna snip a couple buds of basil. There we go, our anapasta salad and our bruschetta with crostini, and next, our eggplant parmesan. I love eggplant parmesan, but it's one of those Italian dishes that can really be heavy in oil and heavy in cheese. I have a fabulous recipe I've been making for years, and it is so good you're not going to be able to tell the difference. Okay, so first I'm going to start with a marinara sauce. I'm going to take just a couple tablespoons of olive oil, and about four tablespoons of garlic, and about half of an onion. Saute for a minute until the onions become translucent and the garlic's took down a bit. Oh, I love that smell. It's one of my favorites. That's a smell that means dinner's cooking. <laughs> okay, to that I'm going to add about one can of diced organic tomatoes and one can of tomato sauce, also organic. And give that a quick stir. Now to this I'm gonna add about a cup of wine. I'm gonna have a really nice organic sulfite free wine here. Now that alcohol is gonna cook off in the marinara, but it's gonna add a really nice layering of flavor. Okay, now to this, we're gonna add some fresh herbs. And once again, I'm going to my own little organic herb garden. I'm just gonna break off some rosemary and some fresh oregano. And of course, I know it's organic because I grew it myself. We're gonna give that a quick stir and just let those herbs season in there. Oh, this smells so good already. And we only use just a fraction of the olive oil that a normal recipe would call for. I have two beautiful eggplants here, and you'll need about two eggplants to really fill up a nice casserole. I'm just going to slice these in about quarter inch rounds. And cooking vegetables in casseroles is a great way to hide them from your kids so that they don't know that they're eating vegetables. I have some nice organic breadcrumbs, and what I generally do is whenever I have bread that's about to go stale, I stick it in the freezer, and then when I need breadcrumbs, I pull it out and put it in the blender, and frozen, it just turns right into breadcrumbs. So to this, I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of garlic powder, and about half a cup of Parmesan cheese. And I'm using a really fun rice-based Parmesan. I'm just gonna give that a quick toss. Now instead of using an egg wash as a binding agent, which you would typically do at this point, I'm gonna take my favorite egg replacement product, which is basically a vegetable starch, and you add it to water and give it a quick whisk, and it's gonna turn into our binding agent. Wow, that marinara is really smelling good. Let me give this another stir. Yum. Okay, now it's time to bread our eggplant. <laughs> time to get messy. Just gonna dip that in the wash. I'm 
And since our fake egg wash doesn't really have a flavor to it, it doesn't detract from our dishes as well. Okay, now once you've finished all of your eggplant, it'll probably take a couple trays. You're gonna put it under the broiler for about five minutes on each side, and it's gonna come out like this. Beautiful and golden brown, and just lightly toasted. Those look gorgeous. Just gonna turn my pasta sauce off now, and add my fresh basil. I like to add the basil right at the very end because that brightness of flavor pops and you don't overcook it. Now this is a really quick cooked marinara, so you don't have to worry if your garlic's not perfectly done yet because it's gonna cook once it's in the casserole in the oven. So the next thing I'm gonna do is start my eggplant casserole. I'm gonna put some marinara right in the bottom of the dish. Oh, this looks just beautiful. I love all the look of the fresh basil in there and it's just starting to cook. Okay, I'm gonna layer that with my eggplant. Careful, it's hot. <laughs> I'm gonna put some more marinara. This is all gonna bake together so beautifully. Now on top of that, I'm gonna add some shredded cheese. And I've chosen a soy mozzarella, just to save on those fat and calories. But you can use a skim milk mozzarella if you like, or an almond mozzarella. But I find that the soy melts really nicely. To that, I'm gonna add some soy Parmesan cheese. Oh, actually, sorry, this was the rice Parmesan. And then we're gonna layer some more eggplant, some more marinara, some more cheese, the last layer of eggplant, my last layer of marinara. But to really get those flavors to combine, you've got to cook it in the oven. And this is one of those things you can prep ahead of time and even put in the refrigerator for a couple hours until you're ready to cook it. So I'm really gonna make sure that sauce gets all around down on the sides. Our final layer of cheese. Our final layer of Parmesan. Now I'm gonna take a piece of foil and cover it. Because it's gonna go in the oven for about 45 minutes, you don't want that cheese to burn. So whether you're using regular cheese or vegetarian vegan cheeses, you still need to cover it with that foil for about the first 30 to 40 minutes. Then you can take the foil off and for the last five or 10, let that cheese really brown up. So I'm gonna put this in the oven at about 400 degrees for about 40 minutes. And when we come back, our tiramisu trifle. It is low in fat and dairy free. Tiramisu is probably one of my favorite desserts. I make it so many ways. I make it into birthday cakes. I make it the traditional way. Well, today I'm making a lighter and healthier version that I think you're gonna just love. And my first trick is a lighter and healthier pastry cream. Now, a lot of desserts start with a typical pastry cream, which is eggs and heavy cream. And that is just a ton of fat and a ton of calories. So I'm gonna start with two cups of soy milk instead of the heavy cream. Now you can use almond milk, you can use rice milk, or you can use low-fat regular milk. I'm gonna put that on medium heat. To that, I'm gonna add four tablespoons of organic cane sugar. And just a little pinch of salt. I'm gonna whisk that together. Now I want to let this warm up a little bit before I add my flour as a thickening agent. And that's because if it's too cold, then it's just hard to whisk the flour in. But if it's too hot, the flour will cook too quickly. So you just kind of want to give that a second to warm up. Okay, and I'm going to really want to whisk as I add this flour. Now to that, I'm going to add about a teaspoon of vanilla. Now what you want to do is let it come to just a soft boil. Keep whisking it and boil it for about two minutes. And then you want to remove it from the heat and let it cool. Now I've made one ahead of time to show you what it looks like when it cools. Notice how I put plastic over the top? That's to keep a skin from forming on it when it's in the refrigerator. 
That will have thickened up nicely and will work fabulous for pastry cream. And you can use this in so many recipes. You can use it in Napoleons, you can use it in eclairs, anywhere that you would use a traditional pastry cream. Now traditionally, you would use a mascarpone cheese in a tiramisu, but that's adding quite a bit of fat and calories, and there's a really fun substitution for it. You can take about half equal amounts of sour cream and cream cheese. It's also nice because a lot of stores you can't actually find mascarpone in. So this is a nice alternative. Now I'm gonna use soy versions. So I have a cup of soy cream cheese and a cup of soy sour cream. And I'm gonna beat those together. Okay, when those are combined, I'm gonna add half a cup of powdered sugar. And I use veganized powdered sugar, just my preference. I'm gonna pre-mix a little bit so I don't spray powdered sugar all over my kitchen. Beautiful, now, now we're gonna add our pastry cream to our mascarpone mixture. Give that a quick stir. Now pastry cream is pretty dense and our mascarpone mixture really makes it nice and lighter and fluffy or much more of a tiramisu consistency. Now I have a beautiful sponge cake. Traditional recipes, you can use lady fingers, but I like to use cake in my trifle. So I have a gorgeous sponge cake I've already made. The recipe is online at jensgiltlessgourmet.com. It's our sponge cake that's eggless and dairyless, but really tasty. So I am simply gonna break this apart. It's a nice bite-sized pieces. Great, now we're gonna add this to a coffee mixture, which is an essential ingredient in tiramisu. I have a couple cups of coffee. I'm gonna add about half a cup of brandy. And then I'm gonna add some agave nectar, which is really like a simple syrup. Because if you add sugar at this point and your coffee is cool, then the sugar won't dissolve properly. We'll just give this a quick stir to combine it. Now let's put together our tiramisu. I think I'm gonna use some wine glasses. This should look really nice. I'm gonna start with a layer of our pastry cream. a layer of cake, and here's where you get messy again. I'm just gonna dip the cake right in the coffee mixture, and then just plop it in there. And it looks like I'm really soaking it in there, and I am. <laughs> I really wanted to pick up the coffee and the brandy. You're not gonna believe what a fabulous low-fat version of this, that this recipe is. And neither will your guests, so don't tell them. I'm just gonna layer more of our pastry cream. And more of our cake. And if you have any cake left over, you can just wrap it and put it in the freezer. It will stay good for a week or so, and then you can make another trifle in a week. Let's all of those flavors combine. And I think a couple pretty raspberries would be beautiful on top.
Wow, those look so good, I really want to eat one right now, but I think I better check to make sure my eggplant casserole is ready. Now we're gonna plate our beautiful eggplant parmesan and serve dinner. This looks so good, I can't wait to eat it. And with our lighter, healthier version, you don't have to feel guilty about it. Wow, this looks so good. And to top it off, going back to my little herb garden here. a little fresh basil. And now for our wine. I have a fabulous organic and sulfite-free wine from Frey Vineyards. I've chosen a Merlot for this dinner, which I think will be fabulous. And this is a wonderful wine if you're allergic to sulfites, because there's very limited sulfites in it. So cheers, thank you for joining me for this fabulous Italian feast. To a healthier planet and a healthier you, salute.